I'm Brendan Mulhall. I live in Downpatrick, but I'm originally from Ard Glass, and I like to think I'm an Ard Glass man who moved to Downpatrick 45 years ago. I would like to tell you about an Ard Glass man called John Hughes. John Hughes was born in 1816 in a little house at Inch Parish Church on the outskirts of Downpatrick. His father wanted to improve the family's uh, fortunes, so he decided to move to Ardglass, which is on the county down coast. When they moved to Ardglass, John was only six, and they lived in what we would call today as a hovel. A hovel was a mud house with a straw roof on it, a thatched cottage. Uh, they would exist on meagre rations of herring, mackerel, and, and, and other fish that they would have caught through the summertime. That would have been uh, substituted with some little vegetables out of the garden. They'd have made up a broth or a soup. So that would sustain them right through to March, whenever the fishing would start again. And John was very concerned that if this hard life was not a way he wanted to exist, and he yearned and thought about going abroad to places, maybe America or Australia. He had a brother, Desmond, who was in New York, and he thought New York might be the place to go. The trip to New York is arduous. He had to get from Art Glass down to Cork. That would take three weeks. Six people sitting in the back of an old jaunting car type thing, sometimes they would walk. Three weeks later, he got down as far as Cork. He shipped then on a vessel called the Creole, which is a two-masted bark, and they would have had maybe 150 passengers on board across the North Atlantic. When he arrived in New York, he was greeted by his brother Desmond, and Desmond suggested they would find accommodation quite easy in New York, but that wasn't to be the case. When they went to look for accommodation, they were greeted by the signs that we sometimes they came across in later years, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. So the only thing for them was hot bedding. In hot bedding, you go to a boarding house, today you would call it Airbnb, but it wasn't a bit like an Airbnb. So you go to Airbnb boarding house, and after eight hours you had to get out and let somebody else in. He realised this was not the life for him. He had come all the way from Ireland to better himself. He had heard a story about gold finds in California. So he came up with this idea that he would go to California by way of ship. So he got on his ship in New York, and he sailed down to Mexico to Santa Cruz. Got off the ship in Santa Cruz and he thought, I'm on my way, I'll be able to make it up the west coast of America to California. That's going to be fairly easy. But the Mexican government had different ideas. They got hold of him and they said, John, my boy, you got to stay here. We're not letting you out of Mexico. So they enlisted him in the army. So he stayed in the army for a year and was able to save enough money that he could then make his way up to California. He went to Yosemite National Park, which we now know is the big place where the, red, the redwood trees are. The Stanislaw River uh, has alluvial gold, and that's gold that's been washed by the water down through the rivers. He just went hunting, and you could get freebooters who could do that. On the second day, whenever he was uh, freebooting, looking for gold, he happened upon this gold nugget, which he dug out from the bank, and he obviously couldn't believe his eyes when he saw the size of this thing. It was uh, like about a third the size of a loaf of bread, as we see today. It was six inches across, and it weighed 18 pounds. When he realised the good fortune that he had, he then faced with the problem of getting back to England. He didn't want to stay in America with this gold. It was so precious, and he said, I'm going to take my chances going across the plains. In New York, he got a ship that took him to... Uh, Liverpool. He thought, the best thing I can do uh, with, with, with my gold nugget is go to the Bank of England. Now, that was a big step. A guy from Mark Glass going to the Bank of England with a big gold nugget, you know, it sounds a bit, a bit odd. They greeted him with open arms because the story had gone before him. They eventually settled on a thousand pounds. Now, a thousand pounds in those days, how many millions is that today? And every time they have a board meeting or the executive meeting in the Bank of England, the gold nugget comes out and they put it on the table where the directors and board members sit around the table. John then made his way back to Art Glass, where, of course, they were waiting for him. Fantastic. Here comes our local millionaire, the first millionaire probably in Northern Ireland that we ever heard of. And back in Art Glass, the first thing he did was buy a fishing boat. And I'll ask you, what did he call the fishing boat? Nugget. John invested in a local uh, brickyard, which is still there to this day. Uh, he also invested in sailing ships from Cumbria. And Cumbria in England, would have been, uh, they would have been trading back and forward with herring and coal and things like that. But it was most unfortunate because on one ship, 
the captain decided to go out when the weather was inclement going from Cumbria and he had failed to insure the ship. The ship was filled with cargo, left Cumbria and floundered with all hands in the Irish Sea. And of course, most of John's fortune went down with the ship. But I do have a photograph of the nugget when it was presented to the Bank of England. From that photograph, I measured it up, took a few dimensions and I created this nugget which I must say for my grandchildren think I'm a millionaire. <laughs> they think this nugget is absolutely unbelievable. And I made it in my garage. I made it out of some plaster and I just smoothed it out in the shape of the original nugget. So that is the size of John Hughes nugget and that weighed 18 pounds. It draws a great deal of interest, so I put it in a little case and anywhere I go, I bring it out and show it to people and it helps to authenticate the story. <laughs>